So recently, I noticed that several of the big social networking sites out there, they're starting to implement some new policies to help combat some of the bad and toxic people that hang out on those social media sites. So I took some screenshots of one of the big social networking sites, their new policies, and they're implementing these five new strategies to help combat the bad and toxic people out there. The first thing they're going to implement is what they call insensitivity monitoring. Quote, our advanced algorithms will monitor all conversations for certain keywords and phrases that we deem as bigoted, sexist, racist, or mean-spirited. So there is a collection of words and phrases that if you type those, those will immediately trigger the algorithm and you should be banned. The second thing they're going to implement is what they call hate speech inference. Quote, our algorithms are able to recognize certain speech patterns and terminology that may not get caught by our insensitivity monitoring and extrapolate the racist intentions behind those words. So what you say may not get tripped up as far as the uh, bad word list for the insensitivity monitoring, but the hate speech inference uses this advanced AI, even though what you type may not seem racist, they can try to figure out the intentions behind those words and see if really what you're trying to do is imply racism. The third step that this particular site is going to implement is political party and religious affiliation. Quote, all members and guests on this site are asked to identify with a political party and a religious affiliation. While some people will choose to give false information, no one is exempt from this rule. Our algorithms will assign the correct party and church affiliation to any user if we feel the user has not been truthful based on his account history. So even if you falsely claim you're a member of a certain political party or a religious uh, organization, they will search your account history and figure out what your true beliefs are. And of course, they can't do anything like that unless they have this fourth step implemented, which is audio and video validation. So, quote, all users of this site must have a working microphone and camera, which will be used for voice recognition and speech pattern monitoring. This is used to validate that you are, in fact, the person that you claim to be and that you actually hold the opinions that you espouse. And the fifth and final implementation is automatic reporting. Quote, all violations of our code of conduct will automatically be reported to the National Database of Deplorable Persons. This online database is made publicly available and can be used by employers as an aid in making certain decisions, including job offers, promotions, and or termination. Now, if you pay close attention, you will know that these screenshots I supposedly took are fake, right? These are rather amateurish fake screenshots that I created. And if you noticed, uh, the date I put on them is actually a date in the future. It's just a few months in the future. And a few months might be all we have until some of the major social networking sites out there actually start implementing policies such as the ones that I foretold earlier in this video. So Facebook, Twitter, Google, they could implement this kind of stuff tomorrow if they chose to do so because they already have the infrastructure in place to do this kind of stuff if they wanted to. And over 3 billion people around the world, that's almost half the global population, would allow such policies to be implemented. Why would these people allow that? Because all of those billions of people, they are so addicted to social media that they would allow themselves to be subjected to all this. They would allow these social networks to take advantage of them if the choice was between letting the social networks do this or not being able to use that particular platform, then they would allow the social network to do whatever it is they want to do. That's just the fact. In fact, these billions of people have already made that choice because look at the privacy and security scandals involving Facebook and Twitter over the last couple of years. How many users of those particular sites left the platform due to the immoral and illegal activities uh, hardly any people left Facebook and Twitter over that because these people are spending, on average, two hours a day sharing and liking and tweeting and updating their status. These people can't imagine a world without the social network. One of the scary things is I think that the insensitivity monitoring that I talked about earlier, I think that that's probably already a real thing. Think about it. When you have so many people spending hours a day on social media, typing on social media, or messaging on their smartphones, or doing voice chats on things like Discord and Skype. Uh, do you think that all that information isn't being collected? 
and that some of what you say and some of the things that you type isn't being flagged as potential threats. I mean, we already have social networks that ban people for inferring the wrong meaning of their words. It happens all the time. Uh, A couple of years ago, Twitter started banning all forms of what they considered violent speech. So threats of violence against anyone, including yourself. And because of that, thousands and thousands of people have been banned from Twitter for really no reason at all, because what these people are typing is oftentimes a joke or just said in jest. So Twitter started banning, you know, every user that use keywords, key phrases like uh, kill myself, cut myself, or they deserve to be shot, you know, just common things that some people say all the time. Well, apparently Any of these such phrases is deemed as a serious threat of violence, according to Twitter. And, you know, it can't be a joke. You know, the the algorithm, the computer can't figure out if you're joking or not. (laughs) They just ban you just for having said that key word or that key phrase. We've also seen social networking sites ban people for trying to circumvent the policy against saying certain bad words. So you can't just replace certain letters with asterisks in a word, (laughs) you know, or you can't just abbreviate a bad word or a bad phrase because sometimes those asterisks or the abbreviated form of that bad word or bad phrase will trigger the algorithm and will trigger the ban hammer. So the reason I was making this video today is I think with the current climate that we're in. I think we're ripe for the taking here. I think if the social networks wanted to implement this George Orwell 1984 style Big Brother code of conduct, people would go along with it. Because right now everybody is wanting to fight racism and anti-Semitism and bigotry or everybody wants to be seen as fighting that particular fight. Right now that fight to eradicate all forms of quote hate speech, it's never been stronger. And Who determines what is and what is not hate speech? That's the problem here is because words on a screen, words can have multiple meanings and really it's all about context. And the truth is that you can't eliminate this stuff. There's there's absolutely no way you will ever eliminate what these people deem as hate speech because people will simply adjust their speech. They will develop a new terminology. So the social network, then they're going to have to keep adding new words and phrases to the ban list. They're going to have to adjust their algorithms, you know, as people adjust their speech. So the hate mongers, they're going to keep evolving their terminology and the social sites, they're going to keep banning more and more words until until the entire spoken word is just deemed as hate speech, right? And then all we're left with is communicating with hand signals, I guess. But you got to be careful with that because there's that one finger that will also get you banned. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few people. I need to thank Michael, Gabe, Pablo, Nate, Corbini, and Mitchell, Entropy UK, John, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Lewis, Omri, Paul, Robert, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. They are the producers of this show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, all these names on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to help support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.